Okay. Hey, Kim. So my old YouTube is up over here. My new YouTube is up over here. <laughs> my Instagram is up over here. <laughs> hey, Boss Hall. Um, so I only really left up my old YouTube because if anyone come on this one thinking that this is where I'm going to be, I wanted you. Hey, Keish Casey, I told I knew you guys were going to come over here. I'm actually streaming from my new YouTube. So this one, which is my old, not my old, but the draping YouTube. If you guys like leave comments and things, I won't be able to see it because my focus is going to be on this camera, which is my new YouTube. So if you want to click that link, I pinned it at the top over here on the Draping YouTube. Um, so you guys can come over here on this side. So I can kind of see if you if if you if you leave any comments or anything. Um, but yeah, so I kind of been talking to you guys a little bit, like over the past couple of weeks, telling you guys that I'm gonna be going live, like when it comes to the business side of things and growing and scaling and all the stuff we talk about, right? I'm going to be talking about it on this channel because it's the other channel. I want it to stay real relative to draping. I don't want people to come to that channel and see all these other conversations and get confused, right? So if they're looking to take their business, let's say, to the next level, or they're looking to grow their business, or they're looking for a business strategy, this is the place to be. I'm kind of going to separate the two entities. Um same thing here on on IG. Um, lately, I've been going live a lot more on IG because I didn't realize the support I had on IG. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's kind of bring IG into the mix. So once, um, like the streaming services I use currently is able to support IG, it'll be so much easier, so much easier. But until then, I'm gonna include you guys as much as I can, as much as I can. I am. Um, so, like I said, over here, guys, Keish, uh, um, Kimberly Keish, the reason why I wanted to go, I wasn't going to really kind of start this Tuesday segment until January, right? But I said I might as well kind of go ahead and kick it off because now I'm, 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 the, the conversation is happening in the group. And today I asked a question in the group. I don't remember you guys answering. I, I don't remember seeing y'all answer. But... I asked a question in the group, like as far as your next big goal. And baby, so many people had like a very common goal. Like one thing for certain is like uh, my initial audience was in the event planning space, right? That's pretty much the bulk of who I serve, who I help, all that good stuff. So it was so ironic that Almost everybody on that thread said that they wanted a, um, a venue. They wanted a venue. They wanted their own spot. And I get it. I mean, that is like the ultimate goal, I guess, if that's like, you know, your arena. I can see that happening. But one thing I did notice, and that's why I thought it was really uh, kind of important to talk on this topic tonight, is because some people, and y'all not clearly going to call the way out. But some people had the same goal the previous years and the previous years. And I'm like, okay. So it ain't too many things that could have happened. And I know for one, most of the things that happened with me is, um, I don't know. I don't know they said they can't hear over here. So you guys let me know if you can hear me now. One thing. I know with me, if I don't accomplish something that I say I want to do, I didn't drop the ball. I'm not going to lie. I dropped the ball, right? Oh, I didn't go as hard or I didn't do all the steps in place that I set out to do. Um, so I, I just thought this was real interesting to kind of talk about it tonight. And I want to hear some other stuff that you guys are kind of talking about, right? Oh, wait a minute. I never went live over here. Oh, my fault. So yeah, you guys, <laughs> excuse me, you guys come over here. I thought I was live over here, but I wasn't. I was live over here. So the main thing, guys, is just trying to figure out what happened. I want to talk to those that I normally talk to to find out, like, if you have the same goals that you pro probably had from the previous year, what happened while you weren't able to achieve those goals? Like, and I, I want you guys to be honest. Like, this is a safe space. 
when I F up, one thing I can tell you for sure, I tell y'all, <laughs> I don't sugarcoat it. I say, Ziva, I, I wasn't consistent. I took on too many things at the same time. I didn't properly invest or pay much attention to that one thing. It's a numerous, uh, um, a numerous amount of reasons why it didn't do or perform the way I wanted it to, right? So I'm like, uh, one of the most common goals that was shared tonight was everybody won the venue. And it's funny because even like people I've been talking to over the past, let's just say two, three months. Um, so I only restarted my, my coaching like two months now. And the ladies I've been talking to, like that is like, that is the thing. So I kind of want to know. Like what 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 are your goals for if it's if you find that it's a repeat, like you you heard yourself saying this before, like what happened? I know procrastination is a very real thing, and I don't I don't think it it is really measured by or I don't think you can really pay attention to if you procrastinate or if you don't according to the level of success you're at. Because I know millionaires that that procrastinate, right? At the end of the day, it's really about Finding the tools to help put an end to it because it is really just a bad habit. <laughs> I try to kid you not. It's really just is a bad habit. And when you do have the tools in place to kind of combat it, now granted, it is not going to happen overnight. But if you know, like if you were one of the ones on that thread and you know this is your second time having that same goal and you had it the previous year, I want to know what happened. <laughs> Right. I want to know what happened. But I'm also tonight going to give you guys some really quick tools. I'm not going to have a long broadcast. I just really wanted to introduce to um, my audience like where now I'm going to be like, come over here. Come over here. Kim, why are you the queen of procrastination? I get it, but it has to be a reason, guys. It has to be a reason. We can't. Awesome. Thank you, Boss Hall over on IG. So it has to be a reason you're procrastinating, right? And that's some of the some of the things I kind of want to touch on briefly. I'm not going to get too deep into it because if you guys know, I do have a five-day challenge coming up that is in a week and a half. And that's where we kind of really like dig deep and get into those, those things of what is happening. But I just wanted tonight to have an intimate conversation. I really did. Yes, having the venue is my dream. Kim, <laughs> that's several others dream I, I think the threat was lit up right the threat was lit up and that's all everybody wanted to do they wanted their own spot they wanted the venue they wanted the shop they wanted that that was it i was like okay i okay so now and i'm like i gotta find a coach and i know there is one that teach you how to open up your own venue because you know at, at the end of the day I think they'll find much more success by pairing and partnering with someone that has already done it successfully. That's the key, successfully. Um, some same song. My current employment is stressful, long out. Kim, it is so we you know we know each other. So it is. I, I totally get it. My thing is, is it any way you can kind of rob some time or make some other sacrifice? I know you already make a lot. I, I know that. Is there any other opportunity? Because you have one thing about you, Kim, I want to say, you have so much value to offer. And I don't know, I just get so tired. <laughs> or I just feel some, I just feel something when I know this situation. Like, and I'm like, no, like she deserved more. She deserved more because you are a great human being, right? You're super helpful. You're super caring. You have a big heart. You have all these things. And I just wanted, I want to see it work out in your favor. I really do. I really do. Tired of this job taking me, taking me away from being creative. It's draining. <laughs> Hold on. Kim, we there with you. Keisha, go hug your friend. I found the space, but it was out of my budget. Then I got mad. So Keisha, peep the move. So realistically, and I don't know if you signed up for the training, but I'm going to tell you guys how great manifestation is. So I'm I'm looking for a space, right? For those of you that know, I recently shut down all of my offices because I kept getting these offices and kept getting these offices. And they weren't, at the time, it was great for what I thought I needed. But realistically, as time grew, it wasn't big enough for the vision. It couldn't support the vision. So I said, let me go back to ground zero. Let me think this thing through and let me put the right parameters in place to support the vision. 
not what my budget can handle at the moment. So it's one thing I tell you guys a lot. You know, you guys know I say it all the time. When you want something, you're going to find that money. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. You're going to find that money. And it's all of really of realistically about mentally where you are, where you see, what you believe. From the amount of success we've been able to achieve in such a short amount of time, I know we're going to the top. And I can't play small no more, right? I can't play small. However, the next move, I tell you guys, I told you for the past month, my next move got to be my best move. Now, even if it's not like we're going into a new space and can immediately fill it up, that is not the goal. The goal is as the business grow and scale, because I never want to stay stagnant, the space that I have has the ability to accommodate my vision, period. And I don't know how, <laughs> I just had the mindset, like, I, even if it's, I say it's out of my budget, it's, I'm like, no, I got to go get this money because that's the vision. And I have to make it happen by any means necessary. Otherwise, I'm going to continuously play small, right? I'm going to continuously stay in this bubble and I'm going to continuously be unhappy, unfulfilled, all the things and feel like I can do better and should be doing better, but I'm not because I'm letting certain things get in the way, right? I'm getting in my own way at the end of the day. Find that money. <laughs> Kim say, find that money. I'm trying to tell you. She said, see, that's me. I know what I want, but only had small storage fronts available and I'm looking for something like a Walgreens. Right, Keisha, exactly. So realistically, for the amount of stuff that you guys be having and harnessing, like you guys be having a lot of stuff. And it, well, I'm going to say you guys because I've got rid of mine. But I, it grows so fast, like, and then you, before you know it, you run out of, you run out of space and then you need more space and you need more space. And at the end of the day, if you create the plan to support the vision and the get go, it'll, it'll be such a easier, you know, easier process. And I know it's easier to say than do, but realistically, that's what it takes. It's like, you got to see the vision, right? You got to have the vision and then put, do whatever is necessary for you to get there. When I was in the offices that I, now I've been in Buckhead, I've had an amazing skyscraping office in Buckhead, that does not support where I am now. However, I just needed that big floor to ceiling, uh, that <laughs> floor to ceiling window, because that's how I get inspiration. So realistically, that, that office was only to nurture my mindset in, in order for me to kind of just zone out and just dream bigger. I needed to be in that space. That's really realistically what that office was. But then going to my next office, like almost having the entire building, but that was the, the reason being is because I'm like, I, I was kind of, again, playing small or not really in believing how big the business side of things could grow, not really believing how I was going to be bringing in truckloads of, I just, I don't know. That's just not what I thought. And then when it was happening, I'm trying to get more offices. And more, before you know it, we almost had the entire building. And I'm trying to now fix something like my vision. And I'm trying to cram it in a box. And my vision was too big for the box. And so I had to, again, go back to the drawing board and start all over and reinvent. And this time, it's like, okay, I'm going to start with the end in mind and work backwards. I know exactly where I want to be. It's about putting those parameters in place to support that. There is nothing else. That's it. That's it. <laughs> we can't do anything else. My budget is 300K, but the space I found was 500K. But also, that's, that's what I was going to say. So guess what? When I was out looking for space, right? I did have a specific budget I wanted, I had in mind for this new space I, I, I wanted. Because it was pretty much like a fulfillment center. But I had stepped into one spot. Now, clearly was outside of mentally what I was willing to pay. But everything, I just saw the space allowed my vision to kind of even get grow even more. Because it just allowed for other, it's like it allowed for other opportunities that I wasn't even thinking of at the time. And I came back home with that thing like, it has to work. It has to work because it had too many other potential opportunities 
for business growth. And it all was in alignment with what I was doing. So one thing I can say about me, I, I don't know anyone else, but me, even though I have grown with my personal development mindset, all that over the past couple, two, three years, I'm still not fully developed. I still have those old traits and those old thought patterns that are like, hold on, hold on. Let me read all the paperwork. Like I am still that girl, right? <laughs> it's funny, but I am still that girl. And that comes from 38 years of traumatic experiences. So it's not going to just drop overnight. But I do periodically give myself grace and like, okay, look at look at what you've done in a short amount of time. It can only get greater later, right? But you have to do the necessary steps in order to allow it to flourish. If I keep the lid on, it's going to stay in containment. It's going to stay in containment. It's not going to go that far, right? It's not going to go that far. So main thing I wanted to get on here tonight, guys, I'm like, hey, Diane. The main thing I wanted to get on here tonight, guys, and tell you about tonight was really just talking about um, just overcoming procrastination because you guys right now, a lot of you guys are excited. Y'all in your goal planning phase and y'all in your new year, new me, new all whoop the whoop. I get it. So one thing I love doing is really playing on that energy because if you get a person at the right moment, it's really no telling what can happen. Magic happens when when energies collide. Mag magic happens when it's the right moment. And so many people be so fired up around this time. When I look back, like this is the, around the time I launched everything I did. This time I launched my business. Every time, because this is when I'm in evaluation mode, right? Even anytime I wanted to change my business model or come up with a new idea, it always happened around this time. For one, I always take December off. I really don't do much work off. I need time to think. And that's just where I'm at right now. I need time to think of where I'm going, what's going to be needed, what didn't work over the past. I'm really analytical in December. And people, I've also noticed, this is when I hire the most because I, um, I'm realizing what it's going to take for me to get to where I want to get to. So I'm in higher mode. Like, all right, I know I need you. 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 Whereas though any other portion of the year is a little, little like, I don't know what you do again. <laughs> but right around this time, it's like, I'm super excited to, to grow. And I'm putting, I have the, the mental capacity, like, this is where I'm at. This is what I need. Let's roll with it. You hit me around March, it kind of start going down because now I'm super analytical. Like, well, you said you was going to do, and then that's kind of when I start firing those that didn't show up. So <laughs> it's a really exciting time of the year, if I if I had to say so. Hey, Toya, see, I knew y'all was going to come over here. Get y'all butts over here. On a, hey, Trin, see, you listen, Trin, you on the, you where you supposed to be. These, these guys over here, they so used to me being on the other one. Guys, I'm, I'm going to need you to get in the habit of being over here strictly because this is where these kind of conversations are going to happen. I'm not going to have them over here because I don't want to confuse the audience that follows this channel. Um, and that's why you run into dead ends like a baby. You have to crawl first. Hello, say it again. How do you work backwards? So, Keisha, working backwards for me, I could, I, I, I won't, I'm going to tell you an example. Let's just say I'm looking, we just talked about looking for a space. So this should be really, really relative to, to, you know, what you've been able to get exactly what I'm saying. Looking for a space, I'm going to work backwards because I am, that's the same way I bought, I bought this house. I am going to look at it as everything I needed to do. Even if I'm not at that level today, right? I know exactly how I want my business to run. I know how I want my nonprofit to run. I know how many people I want to work in there. I know what I want them to do, right? If I worked backwards like that when I was searching for my last office, I would have knew God going well, this cannot support the vision. It can't. This can hold a maximum. I think in that office or offices, the maximum I had at that moment was probably like 17 members. I had like seven employees in, in those buildings. And it was cramped, right? It was cramped. So I didn't go into it looking, I didn't go into it working backwards. I went into it like I need a space that can accommodate all my needs right now and there's no room for growth. 
There's no room for growth, right? And it got to be the least amount of people for people to be able to maneuver and be comfortable. Now I know, okay, I already had a, a building with employees of seven. Clearly that wasn't great enough. So now I need at least employees of 25, right? I need an office for this person. I need an office for that person. I need a team meeting for this kind. I am seeing the vision. So now when I go and look at spaces, I am working from the vision backwards. I'm not thinking of where I am today because the whole goal is to grow and to scale. So as we're growing, I need my investment, which is this property, to be able to secure what, what I have going on. I need it to accommodate what I have going on. So when I say that, that's what I mean when I say working backwards. Another thing is a lot of people have visions. Y'all that know me, y'all know my vision is. I need a house internationally, Fiji somewhere where I'm walking out on the veranda with my, you know, my, my little pretty drink or whatever it is. That is the vision. I see it so clear. I know what I'm going to have on. I'm going to have on some white lace, something I probably made or I don't know, something important. I don't know, but I see it, right? <laughs> my little puff, fluffy set slippers, I see it. But I had to be realistic, right? Before I could, thankfully, my kids are are grown and like older but someone that can have that dream clearly wouldn't it would be highly unlikely that that's going to happen if they had school children like little babies you know i have a lot more time freedom when it comes to motherhood so it's like being realistic about visualizing where you want to be and being able to produce a lifestyle around where you want to be things now that i want to do i just look at the end goal i kind of look at what I wanted to be, how it's going, I, I just see it. I visualize it, right? And I'm, I'm kind of manifesting things to in my life that's going to support that vision. Guys, I've only relaunched my coaching program and got back into my little pivot mode from, you know, what I was doing with all the draping and fabric to now being a published author and, and speaker and all this. That is my focus. That's where I want to be. Since I've been so focused on that, I have been awarded so many opportunities in a very short amount of time. Reason being is because that is my focus. That's where I want to do. That's what I. That's where I want to be. I envision. If y'all know me, I envisioned this a long time ago. <laughs> Say it again, Donna. If y'all, yeah, I envisioned it a long time ago. I am going to be either Oprah stage or her virtual platform or a Yonless. Either one will be fine with me. But now there's some other new come up and coming in the ranks. I'm like, I would like to sit on that one too. But as close as I got to it, at least was an intimate um, experience with Stegman. So that was like, for me, confirmation. You're doing, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're well on your way. But when I talk about, <laughs> man, I knew how my hair was going to be. I knew what I was wearing. I could see me get you know gilly galley walking across the stage because i'm never going to lose that that's me that's my personality but it's really a, like just bringing those things in, in existence and attracting them to your light at the end of the day but you got to be clear on what you want i know exactly what i want i may know a few years ago but i know now <laughs> so who over here? not too many people over here to you I, I, I need you guys to filter over here but that's all right, y'all will get it because y'all will come over there on this page thinking I'm here. Y'all like, where's she at? She ain't there. And they were like, oh, yes, I am. I told y'all I was going live over here. Yes, I'm here. I'm I'm late. I had a business meeting, had to hire. Ah, baby, anytime it's is 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 breathing life into your vision, but you gotta pass, baby. Toya, don't you worry about it. You gotta pass. Toya say, can we give it up to Toya? Toya say she was hiring more people. I'm trying to tell you. Hire fast and fire faster. <laughs> but God, I did want to share with you guys real quick. I'm going to share with you guys um, just some easy, easy ways that you can really just end procrastination. And it's not to say it's like going to go away and not be existent in your life at all. Because even though I'm a lot better with it, I have my days. I'm not going to lie. Some days I'm just overwhelmed because it's a lot and you're juggling a lot. But... I can hear something, I can think of something, I can see something, or ironically, one of you guys will hit me in my DMs and make, and it'll snap me out of it, right? It'll snap me out like, girl, you got work to do, get up. <laughs> but I'll have my days like, you wanna know what? No, I just need one day, Lord, just give me one day, just give me one day. But 
it's a lot of tools I was able to kind of learn over the course of, I would say the, like the past two years, because Kim, I'm with you, babe. I was um, procrastination queen. I was, but I had to dig deeper and think about why was I procrastinating? And for so long, I thought it was because I just was lazy. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm -mm. That ain't it. That is not the primary reason. I thought it was. But guys, when you think about, you know, you procrastinate, you don't want to do it, you're putting it off and you're putting it off. At the end of the day, for one, you got to understand where the procrastinating is coming from, right? Like, what are you procrastinating on? And for me, a lot of the things was I would procrastinate for stuff like this. Like I would set up the whole thing like, yeah, I'm going to go live and I'm going to connect with my audience. And then I, I would put it off and I would put it off and I would put it off. And realistically, I was thinking, you're just being lazy. You don't feel like doing it, blah, blah, blah. But no, <laughs> I was scared. I was, I don't know what it, when I first got into this thing, I am not. I know y'all see me now get on here and I'm loud. And all the things, because we cool. We know each other. <laughs> but that had to be built, right? That confidence had to be built. I just knew, because every time I go somewhere, or I, even today, but today, I don't care. But even today, anytime I say anything, the first thing a person will say, where you from? You know, you can hear that Baltimore hood swag. You hear that Baltimore, you hear it, right? And at first, I was like, oh, my God, I'm never going to be able to drop this thing. No matter what. And now and I'm like, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's where I'm from. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like crazy, but you got to realize like what is causing you to put things off at the end of the day. And you got to, not only that, but you got to deal with it, right? I had to really deal with, I was in my self-developmental phase for like a whole year. And it just, one thing led to another thing, led to another thing. And I was just realizing that I, I was just so not confident like I was so unsure of myself I was like no don't go out there girl <laughs> don't do it uh-uh they're gonna do this they're gonna and today I'm like I can't explain it I can't explain it but like I said it took like uh almost a whole year of just working on myself loving myself understanding myself right because I had this thing that I know I'm a big, I, I'm a big energy. I am. I, you know, some people can't say that's cool though. <laughs> because the ones that can, they do very well. So it's like, I had to get comfortable with that and realize my people are my people, right? And my people have been with me for a very long time and never, no matter what has happened, never sway, none of those things. So it's like, you have to realize why are you putting things off? Guess what? Some people do it, believe it or not, is because not only just confidence, though. Guys, I experienced this, too, before a short amount of time. And, and sometimes it come and go because some things, crazy stuff be happening. I'm like, whoa, hold on. I don't know what to do all that. I don't know. But some people are afraid of success. I'm just trying to tell you, let that sink in. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. Write that down. Write that down. I keep hearing other coaches say, write that down. So I'm, I'm going to steal that. Write that down. I say, that must be a tip I need to be saying. They say, write that down. So a lot of people, and it's funny because now that I'm actually having these conversations, it's scared of success. And it caused me to think. And I found out I was too. For one, what I'm going to do with it. I What I'm going to do with it, right? You've never really had access to that kind of funds, that kind of support, that kind of a network. You never had access to that. So you could just imagine this little old hood chick, right, <laughs> popping her collar and in this environment of, you know, of what's supposed to be the elite. Of course, you're going to show up unconfident and you're going to show up like you're not good enough. But at the end of the day, you rule the whole room with all your countryness and all your, well, not, we're not going to say ghetto, but with all your hood swag, you own the room. That took a long time for me to understand that. It took a long time for me to not only that, but even digest it and that was happening. It took a long time for me to understand, girl, you're powerful. I ain't know that, <laughs> right? You, hear, you get these messages, and but you, you just think, I said this the other day about us being sometimes too humble, right? Somebody give you a compliment, take it, own it. You deserve it. That's what they see in you. Don't play yourself down. Don't dim your own light. So many times we talk about people dimming their light. You're dimming your own life, right? So it's like, no, take it gracefully, uh, 
give appreciation and all that, but you was given a compliment. One of the worst things I heard this because I used to do the same thing. That's that's what I'm talking about. I used to do the same thing, and I heard that that is so. It's like a form of not disrespect. I can't remember the word, but that that's what it is. Like somebody's giving you a compliment, you're like, hmm, I, I do okay. <laughs> Y'all won't hear me say that today. <laughs> Y'all won't hear me say that today. That's all I want to tell you. Not today. You won't. Y'all, I'm scared and nervous, but I got this 350 foot draping. This 350. In parameter, 350 feet of draping is Saturday. Let, let, let's go. I love it. Let's go. Wedding Wednesday. Let's go. Birthday party Saturday. Oh, let's go. <laughs> this is how you close the year out. Toya, I love it. I love it. I love it. Keisha said, I'm not scared to move forward. It's just hard to find the time to go live and everything else. So, Keisha, girl, I do the same thing. Like, that was one thing I was juggling, right? Was, oh, I got to go live. Oh, I got to do this. And I, that's why I normally on quarter four, that's why you guys didn't see me go live a lot. Because I was pretty much kept up my consistency really good throughout the entire year, juggling everything else I had going on. So I knew that was something I didn't want to do anymore, right? I didn't want to commit to this weekly thing on a topic that it ain't that much to talk about. It's, it's really not. So I had to position it in a way that I enjoy it, which is why we're here. Because I can talk about life experiences over here because I got a lot of them. I can talk about business strategy because I have a lot of that. I can. It's just really crafting your work around your life. I don't know where the heck I heard that at, but I, guys, I just heard that somewhere like over the past few days and it was powerful at the end of the day. It was powerful and clearly it stuck with me. I just don't remember where I heard that. But their focus was crafting their um, work around their life and not the opposite. And at the end of the day, that's I did a lot, I did that a lot, which is why I was unhappy you know, and even when I was just transition, like I would normally go live at in the evening, right? But based on my lifestyle, that wasn't working. So I found myself being resentful because at night I wanted to be with my family, right? <laughs> so I said, moving forward, I just changed a lot of things in my business. And I said, at the end of the day, people that's for you are going to be for you because you have to operate your business in a way that you're happy. And it's not more or less of a, you feel bogged down or you feel like you've got to do this because then you're going to show up with this negative energy, right? Who want that? Because it's going to transfer on the camera. Like, who want that? So main thing with Keisha is being able to craft what you can do, what you would enjoy doing around what it is you're actually doing. That way you're not so resentful. So now I said, that was my struggle, right? Because y'all know I'm, I'm knee deep in this draping game. But I'm like, I got a bigger impact to create. I got a, I got more work to do. They got nothing to do with draping. So it's like, I got to pivot. I, I, I got to. I've been fighting with this thing for so long. Y'all been hearing me talk about, I want to go, I want to do some other stuff for a very long time. And this was my year to lay the foundation to allow me to do that moving forward, right? So it's now it's just an easy transition. I'm like, will you, your, your people will, show up when you're available but you be you have to one be able to provide consistency and don't go li like don't think you gotta go live 50 times a day like no you don't you just gotta be consistent i only went live once a week and when i went live guess what the people that was there was there that was my that's my core they're the people that can reach out to me almost any time right but it's really developing your business around your life and not the opposite way around Things going to happen, but and if you do it that way, you'll find that when you do go live, for one, you'll enjoy it. You'll because this is live is supposed to be a, a nurturing thing, like a real, uh, like a bonding moment, right, with you and your audience. So you definitely will be able to, you'll be able to get it. You'll be able to get it. So Keisha, when you say Keisha, say even doing videos and scheduling them out, I can't find the time to do it. Yeah, you need a VA. <laughs> you need a VA. I know y'all is no way. I have the Posh Academy, 
I have the the Planet the Profit brand. I have Grand Posture brand. There's no way the amount of reels and things that I create or that's posted on my platforms, there's no way I can do all that by myself unless I am literally in my phone all day. And granted, you do have some people that do that. You do have some people that's there, that's that's their life. However, I love life. I love enjoying life outside of cell phone activity. So I pay people to do that. And it's not even like a, a how I look at it, it's not even like a thing that's like super costly because I'm getting my time back and I'm getting my time back to focus on the things that I enjoy, such as this live. I don't go live on Tuesdays, but guess what? I'm here tonight. <laughs> I just was live last night and I got to go live tomorrow. Now, if I was in there in my phone doing all this stuff, I wouldn't have time to do that. Or if I did do it, I'd be burnt out and don't really feel like doing it. So it's like really being able to... <laughs> It's like really being able to wait a minute. Yes, ma'am. Hold gym. I'm using all my posh academy draping. Oh my I mean, you gotta show you gotta show it to us, Toy. You gotta show it to us. Keisha, you're not always right. Don't think that. So VAs, realistically, guys, I don't know why some people think that these VAs are super, super, super ex ex expensive, right? So for me, how I look at it, how I onboard VAs, I used to look for the cheapest, I'm not gonna lie. And I got the crappiest quality of work, right? And now I have VA. Some of them are only seven bucks, but guess what? They only do they do some some of the most simplest work for like an hour. Then I have some VAs that charge twenty two dollars, but it's about the quality of work and the value that they're adding to my business and the amount of time that I'm able to get back. That is like the most important thing for me. So it's like I'll then I don't know if you guys remember, but like maybe back in, I, no, one October come on. Just before I left my office, I had left for like for like the last two months before I shut my offices down. I would sit there every day, and now even though I had staff there, I was physically doing things like what it needed to be done every day, and doing things and writing them down that what I did not like or what I needed somebody else to do. And then when I developed my list, I prioritized it according to the most money generating activities, and then it will go down the line. And then I hired somebody for the for the priority stuff, right? And some of the stuff, like I said, the, the VA um, would cost more because it may include a real robust system, something like Kartra. Your average VA is not going to be able to handle some of the systems I have. But some somebody as simple as keeping my calendar straight and let me, rem, you know, reminding me of my appointments, that's easy peasy. Or even like, Creating, um, like if you go ahead, and I, I was talking to somebody that today, somebody, somebody I'm about to hire. If you go ahead and do your recordings and be able to give them the footage and have them chop it up exactly how you want it to be, you trying to tell me it ain't valuable? Oh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> so realistically, the cost is you got to kind of associate the cost to what the return is for you. Like how much time are you going to get back? You could free up your time doing more creative stuff, like actually creating the mock-ups or creating the videos or doing the stuff that a VA can't do. A VA can't go and create your mock-up. That is stuff that you got to do. So you should be focusing on the things that you got to do and everything else. Like, leave it to somebody else. <laughs> hey, Yvonne. You got to. try. Just try it out. Just try it out. Just try it out, Keith. So another thing, I'm going to go on to number two, guys. Another thing when... You procrastinate. Some people, their goals are too big, right? Or it may sound like today, like a lot of people, and they may have chunked it down, but the main goal was they won the venue. Now, for your average person, that's like, whoa, wow. That's a heck of a goal, an amazing goal, right? But how about chunking it down? Like, what's the first thing required for you to obtain this venue? For me now, me back then, it probably would have been research everything I need done. That ain't the me now. Me is go find somebody, hire them to do all the research or find a coach to go and provide me with the framework so I'm not taking the long road if I know exactly what I need to do. Um, so it's really about setting small achievable goals, right? When I was writing my book, my first book, now my first book took me a long time because I set uh, unrealistic goal. And I didn't really realize how much went into writing a book, getting it published, getting the design, sending it to 
um, publishing and then getting kicked out, I didn't realize how much it entailed. So that book took me a much longer time to create than I thought it would. But when I got around to doing my next book, I just went chapter by chapter. I didn't, I didn't eat the frog and say, let me write this whole book. I said, no, let me focus on the chapter. And then I just, before you knew it, it was done. It, it, was, it was just done. But it's really about this, like I said, setting small, achievable goals. That way you're not overwhelmed. You can achieve it. And then boom, you go to the next one. Right. And then a lot of us don't even celebrate ourselves in the small wins. Like, well, I don't think I do it now as much as I used to, like when I was in my office, because I was out. Right. I was out and ripping and running. So. It was easy for me to go somewhere, grab me something real quick. Like, I deserve this. I, I was validated on buying anything I wanted, right? But now I don't go anywhere. So it's kind of a little hard. It's, it's a little hard. So now I kind of celebrate with travel. But you got to be able to celebrate the small wins. I don't care. It was somebody I was talking to the other day, one of my clients. And it was something, something she said she did. And to me, I just love the fact that you achieved it. It's not about the you did this monumental thing and it's like that's not impressive to me i get impressed by knowing something like keisha if you're challenged by going live but if you if you like let's just say you like hey coach guess what i went live this week and then on our next meeting you like hey coach guess what i went live this week we gotta celebrate that because that's something you struggle with that's something you struggle with so many people looking at it as oh i went live and i didn't land a client don't push the cart before the horse. Like you got to build up that consistency. You got to do your part, do your part, and then trust the universe that the end result that you desire is going to come. Just show up. Show up. 85% of businesses fail because people don't show up. Period. That's it. Just show up. That's why y'all think, why y'all think I'm going to go on this show. Because <laughs> this is where I'm going to be. It's just about showing up. Celebrate small wins, Kim. Absolutely. Hey, Yvonne. Um, and the last one, guys, is this is a biggie. Now, y'all hear me talk about this often because one, I'm a Gemini. And then 10, ha, I'm a creative. So your third thing you got to do, guys, you got to remove the distractions. At the end of the day, if you anything, if you're a creative or a Gemini, let's just say you one up. Man, the, the, the opportunities is, is against you. You have to remove the distractions. And realistically, sometimes we don't even realize what's distracting. So one thing I would do, and I still do this to this day, because I don't know about y'all, but y'all got to tell me in the comments, who is a, a tab hog? And when I say tab hog, now I got three computer screens up here, right? Normally, I would be sitting here like, why my computer moving so slow? Because I got 68. 79 tabs open. <laughs> trying to tell you. And I would keep them open because I got this thing. Or oh, I had this thing. Well, I'm going to keep it open because I can get back to it. Not even realizing how slow it's making my production. I'm getting in my own way without even realizing because I'm so holding on to a freaking tab as opposed to just closing it because if my priorities are straight. I'm going to be on, I'm going to be doing, making my mark, doing what I'm supposed to do, right? So, what, when I first got into this, and guys, I, I can remember this like yesterday. I had this coach, and we was on like product productivity, right? And they told me like put this little timer on my. Uh, they told me put this little timer on my thing, where it would, you know, when you're working, the timer would go off. Like you're supposed to, like crunch time, and like you're gonna work on this thing for thirty minutes. And I'm like, if that ain't the dumbest thing ever, because I'm so busy trying to multitask and get all these things done, like, no, I'm going to do five over here. In the meantime, ain't nothing getting completed, right? I'm just busy. I'm just busy as I don't know what, but nothing getting completed. So they told me, try this. And guys, I'm trying to tell you, baby, I would get so frustrated because the dang one thing would go off. And then you're supposed to get up. You're supposed to get up from your workspace, walk around, do whatever. She gave me these things to do. And of course I didn't do it, right? And then before you knew it, I was right back to where I was because she gave me the tools. I never implemented them. I, I did the put it on my computer, but when the sound went off, I took the horn to my own drum. I didn't do what she said do. 
And then I would show up and I'm still frustrated. With like, what she was like, what you get done? And I'm like, oh, nothing really. I was <laughs> working on all this stuff. But the point is, I didn't utilize the tools I was given. So we went through that whole thing and I finally ended up doing it. Guys, I'm trying to tell you, trying to tell you, trying to tell you. That was my first game changer as far as productivity. That was it. Because not only was I able to get up and kind of re and just kind of reshift and refocus, when I came back in, it's like I was ready to go again, as opposed to just sitting here being burnt out, just looking at this freaking computer, looking at these 97 tabs. It was, it was a it was like a reset, right? So then that's when I got heavy into learning about productivity and ways to maximize my time, which is why I, I'm good at, multi, you know, I'm good at juggling multiple brands. So I'm like, all right, we're going to work on Posh Academy for an hour. Okay, cool. We'll shut it off. No matter where I stop, no matter if the project finished or not, I'm done. I'm putting it away, right? But it's about learning how to shut those things off. Same thing with my phone. Now I had any given time, I'll have three phones. Now I'll shut them off when I'm in work mode and I know I'm going, I'm going to bang this out for two hours. They'll call me on my phone. I'm not answering DMs. I'm not doing any of that. Nine times out of 10, my assistant will have it. If somebody calling all that, cause I need to be focused. I got two hours to get this done, but it took a long time guys. I wasn't initially like being able to just get rid of the distractions. I wasn't. And it, it kind of put me in this mind frame. I no longer enjoyed what I was doing because it was taking me away from my family. Right. It was taking me away from, it was just robbing me. It's like it had me in a chokehold, but realistically it didn't. I had my dad myself in a chokehold because I don't know. I don't know. I just was, that's just how I was. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, that's just how I was. Wait a minute. What's your, the key timer. So another thing, another thing, key, uh, Kimberly, I did was the, um, the, um, what you call it? Remember the old kitchen? Because this is another thing she told me to do. Remember the old kitchen timer where you got to wind it all the way up? And then when it go off, it's like super loud. So it, it, she told me to do so many th different things. But that one, I didn't like because it kind of gave me, I don't know about y'all, but I got I, I got some traumatic experiences. So that, that, those loud noises like that, I, I couldn't handle it. I was like, uh, man. <laughs> But I gave it a shot. I gave it a shot, but I ain't like it. I ain't like it. So it's really about finding your rhythm, right? Even at night, like I don't care what's happening in the world. My phone go off at goes off at 10 p.m. No matter what. If you try to call me, text me, you can't reach me, right? Unless I'm up late working on something, then I'm gonna turn it off because I'm up. But nine times out of ten, my phone go off, it's off. And it does not come back on until I am up, right? And I don't want to be disturbed, period. I don't want to be disturbed. So it's like, you really got to realize where your distractions are. And if you don't know, guys, one, one of the ways, the biggest way I found out what was my biggest distraction was, same thing I told you guys of not too long ago, was writing down what I was doing. And when I'm writing, I'm in real time writing down. Oh, I'm on Instagram, answering, I'm on Facebook. And I was like, I see my social media. I'm like, where's the work, right? Where's the work? So that's just how analytical I am because I have to be able to measure the um, my success and I can't blame it on anyone else. So if I'm sitting here playing around on social media and I'm like, okay, well, realistically, what can we tie that to? Did, did I send out 50 DMs? And if that's not, the, if the answer is no, I wasted my time. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, did you connect with anybody? Did you land a new lead? If the answer is no, I've wasted my time. And so a lot of the times, guys, my answer was no, because I was too busy scrolling, which means I can't sit there and play on social media. Anytime I have a social media, like a message or something come through, I can't handle it. It has to be one of my assistants because I'm going to get distracted. I'm going to go in there to answer a message and it's going to be all this other stuff. And before you know it, I didn't sit here with a daggone phone in my hand an hour ago. No, that's unacceptable. There's no way you're going to be able to run your, your company to the and scale it to where you want to when you have that kind of behavior. It's highly unlikely. So main thing is, first thing, guys, I'm going to recap for y'all. Thank y'all for joining me over here. Is number one was understanding exactly why are you procrastinating, right? Why are you doing it anyway? What you running from? What you scared of, right? Face it. D deal with it. Second thing was definitely set small, achievable goals. That way you're not overwhelmed. You're not like, oh my God, I'm never going to get over this mountain. 
when you set the mountain, guess what? You're not going to get over the mountain without milestones that kind of help you along and navigate through the journey. And then the third one, guys, was remove your distractions, distractions, distractions. Sometimes we're so just in the moment, living life in the moment. We're not even realizing that we're distracted. Right? We're not realizing we're distracted. So be pay, pay attention. Be aware. Where are you spending your time? Who are you talking to? That's a biggie. Like, if you ain't talking to somebody that can positively influence you, why are you talking to them? <laughs> I'm just saying, what's the point? Like, I could get a good giggle off of TikTok any day, right? I, I don't do the gossip thing. I, I don't have time to talk about that. It's not putting no dollars in my bank account, right? We're not doing that. If we can't talk about productivity and talking about something to get us to the next level, I talk to you later. Or I just talk. don't talk to you at all. <laughs> so, guys, again... I am going to be, you guys that's over here on my uh, Draping channel, come on, <laughs> y'all hard here. I put the link in the comment. It's the first link. But next week, I need you guys to come over here, come come over here to this to this YouTube, because um, this is where I'm going to be next week. But even if I drop up a link over here on the Draping channel, I'm always going to kind of, you know, let you guys know where I am. But this is where I'll be on Tuesdays, right? I'm still going to be doing my Wednesday, not every Wednesday though, but I still will be over here. It's just not that much to talk about, guys, when it comes to trade, but it's really not. Unless you guys go back in the group like you did and come up with those, you know, filter me with some questions and we can always do that. Or if you guys want to do, a, um, if you guys want to do a, a, a session where, you know, a critique, a critique session, we can always do that. But I don't see the need to do critique sessions no more because y'all, I don't know. Like, y'all work is nearly flawless. I'm like, it's nothing to critique you. <laughs> but we can always do that. Definitely can still do that. And, um, wait a minute, what did Diane say? See, and that's another reason why y'all need to come over here, because I can see Diane's comment on my screen. I can't see y'all. Same thing over here on TikTok, on, on Instagram. Guys, if you're on Instagram, Need you guys to kind of come over here to the YouTube channel so you can participate in the conversation. Cause I can't, my eyes ain't that good. Ain't that good. I can't really see see what you guys are saying. <laughs> but Diane said I find myself starting something and then getting distracted by something else that pops up. It can happen, but just kind of if you just stay focused, like things will pop, things will pop up at the end of the day, no matter what, because that's life. But if you kind of stay focused and learn to kind of block things out, that's why for me, I know when it comes to my phone, things going to pop up all the time. Or if it come up, if it comes to like email, but I just have my time frames when I'm answering when I'm not, because I will get distracted. If something's in there that needs my attention, I'll forget what I was doing and then go and handle that. And then before you know it, I didn't threw myself, I didn't threw myself out the loop. So it's like, no, I can't because I, I know that that's one of my weaknesses. I know. Uh, I even do it when I'm going live with you guys. Like, I'll be talking about something, then I'll go read a comment, and I'm like, what was I talking about? <laughs> That's why a lot of times I try to save my comments till last. That's just how my mind is wired. Um, so definitely put parameters in place, uh, uh, you know, kind of help you to help you with that. Because I do it too, Diane. I'm creating an ad right now to get an intern to help and grow with me. Good! That is, and then you want to know what? I Definitely, if you're in the beginning stages, Diane. One thing I love about interns, or even if, it, if it's not an intern, they're entry level. I love when you're bringing someone on and the goal is for them to stay long term um, because they're learning how you run your business, right? They, so many people that I've interviewed, hired and fired, all the, all the things. You know, they come with this certain set of skill set that it may not work for you, but it may not be how you run things, right? It's, it's, it, for me, it's kind of like since I'm naturally like an instructor, it's kind of like the same thing. It's like I got to unlearn them things that they've learned along the way or their process. And I'm like, that don't work for me. <laughs> that's not going to work for this brand. So when you have people that's willing to kind of grow with the brand and it's going to be a long term relationship. In my experience, that has been the, the, the best experience, right? The best experience. Um, or for me, it, it's just about I'm going to get a consultant like because they're, they're, they clearly are the expert in that field. And I would want the best because I they clearly had it. But it's not a long-term situation unless you're just that good. And I'm going to come to you all the time for this thing. Um, but, yeah, I love, like, those kind of 
relationships when you're as a brand and you guys are growing as a team because that's when you just find longevity in those kind of relationships. Um, so yeah, definitely ROI return on investment. Absolutely. I set my Alexa to alone. You want to know what? I have it. Um, my, I just uh, got my daughter uh, Alexa and she, it works for her. But for me now, because I've just been real diligent and creating a routine. Speaking of guys, I'm trying to tell y'all this thing is not, this thing is going to require a different precious. Guys, here's my morning routine. You probably can't see it, but I'm practicing. I'm pra y'all think I'm trying to tell y'all every day. And this is my night routine, meaning I got to get off this thing because I got to go fill out my planner for the morning. I got to go meditate. I got to go write in my journal. I got to take a hot shower or a bath. Tonight, it probably be a bath. And I probably and I gotta drink a, a hot cup of tea tonight. It may be a glass of wine, but <laughs> that's my routine. I'm trying to get into this this rhythm for the for the evening and for the morning because I know that that's what this next level is going to require, right? It's going to require a different a different precious. It's going to require discipline. It's going to even more discipline. It's going to require all the things that I don't have right now. So I'm practicing. I am absolutely Diane. All right, guys, I need some critiques, ma'am. Toya, I haven't seen no work from you, boo. What you need critiques on? I haven't seen you post anything in the group lately. <laughs> Kim, you can join me with the Kool-Aid, Kim. <laughs> so I'm going to post a, it can be for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's the 7th. I'm going to post something in the group to get, collect some more critiques. And we probably have it, I have a training on the, 20 i look like the 27th we probably do it on the 28th just before the the new year like have our little end of the year party but guys main thing is if you have not signed up for my goal planning um not goal planning for my goal setting training sign up a lot of you guys as the things that you guys were saying and like things we talked about it'll be super easy or it'll be much easier not super easy it'll be much easier if you get on this training it's totally free You'll spend an hour with me every night at 8 p.m. from the 19th to the 23rd. And I'm going to be sharing with you guys some goal setting at um, some goal setting strategies. And you'll tell me your goals. And I'm going to pretty much tell you how to break that down and make it more achievable because I don't want <laughs> y'all know y'all my peeps. I don't want to have this conversation next year in December. And we're talking about the same goals. I want it to be different goals. I want it to be bigger goals. I want it to be next level stuff, right? That's going to be on top of what, what we're going to achieve this year. So again, thank you guys for spending time with me tonight. I know this is impromptu, but still, y'all showed up. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. But guys, over here on this channel, and I know it looks like I'm looking on the side because the one camera is here, but the draping channel, I need you guys to look at that pin comment and i need you guys to come and go, come on this the new channel that way you don't miss when i go live also look on the, the the screen that link tree click that link tree well you can't click it but go there so you can sign up for the challenge it'll be the very first button on my link tree sign up for the five day challenge that way you guys will be there i'm going to do it this time five day challenge come on kim i better see you there too and it's in the evening so i want to handle stop last year i did it in the daytime uh, that's when I was on my stuff. I just told you I was trying to position my business around <laughs> around my life. <laughs> but now this time around, I got time in the evening. So we're going to do it in the evening. So thank you, guys. I'm, I was glad that I could catch you tonight. Sunshine, where you been at? Hope, will you be able to catch me tomorrow? No, tomorrow I'll be over here. Tomorrow I'll be on, over on my regular uh, partial late night bed on the draping side. So again, guys, thank you over here for the new channel. Thank you for joining me. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the notifications bell. That way you know each and every time I go live, each and every time I upload a new video, because that's what's going to be happening over here. There's so much more to life than draping. <laughs> so much more to, the, to your businesses that I can help, areas that I can help you in. So come over here and become a part of this tribe. Collectively, it's still all the tribe. It's the precious tribe. Just, just be a part. And I'll see you guys. If I see you on the other channel tomorrow, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys. Same thing over here on, what's this? Uh, IG. IG, thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody that did join. 
If you heard, look, click the link in my bio so you can join the five-day free challenge. Goal setting challenge starts December 19th to the 23rd. You spend an hour with me every night in our exclusive group, meaning I won't be anywhere else other than this group, helping you set attainable goals. See you there. And now my regular channel, guys. I hope to see you guys tomorrow um, for Partially Night Best, our regular Draping session. Um, I forgot what the topic is about, but I'll be there tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hopefully, you can join because I, I think I only have like two more. But yeah, I did for this year for the Draping channel as far as live broadcast. So I'll see you guys then. Bye, guys. <laughs>